How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Today I got a little bit of a catch up to show you some of the things I received in the mail. I got my shirt on from a Port Herald there down in Texas. <laughs> He's a funny guy to watch and uh, he does all sorts of stuff in his shop and uh, make sure you guys are subscribing and watching his channel. He's a, he's a good guy. I've met him a couple times and I uh, uh, really like Harold. Anyway, I figured out what K-O-K-O -K -O means. So keep on keeping on. Uh, I don't know why I didn't figure that out. Anyway, thanks Harold uh, for having a campaign and I picked up one of your shirts to help you out. I have a couple more channels I want to mention. Uh, YouTube channels that you guys might want to look at. And, uh, they're good guys. I've met, I've met both of these guys. Uh, at Mr. Pete. House of Broken Dobbs Things. I had to write it down. <laughs> uh, from Dan Dobbs. Uh, he's been a watcher or a viewer of my channel for a while. And I emailed with him. and, and uh, But he has his own channel. And uh, he's doing some uh, nice uh, machine parts stuff. And, uh, you know, showing his tools. And kind of the typical machine type stuff in the shop. But uh, it looks like he's in the basement. But uh, Dan's a really nice guy. And uh, he could use a few subscribers. Also, uh, Metal Works Machine Shop. Now, I mentioned them in the other video. I got a couple stickers. Uh, Doug Luster. And uh, he has a huge shaper. It looks like he has a nice cl old closing. I think it's a, uh, a Colchester. I should say Colchester lathe in his shop. Uh, I'm not sure if it's... But I, that's what it kind of looks like. But he has a really nice big uh, Cincinnati uh, shaper. I believe it is. A uh, big one. 24 inch maybe maybe bigger it's an awfully big machine so uh, he's he's doing some uh, work on that and showing the using the shaper too uh all you guys got old shapers <laughs> big machines so uh metal works machine shop and house of broken dobbs things uh please uh, check out their channels and uh, maybe you'll subscribe you know subscribing to a channel is free it doesn't cost you anything uh it's 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 kind of nice if it gives you encouragement if you're a, you know, if you're a creator to uh, want to try to keep, keep creating. And if you, the more you create, the better you get. And uh, you might show some interesting things and people, you know, uh, maybe learn something from what you're doing. I mean, not all channels are about uh, teaching and learning, but, uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of different channels. And I, I gleam something from just about everybody I watch. Some of it's just pure entertainment. So, anyway, thank you guys. Uh, thanks for watching me. And I do appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm continuing on with uh, the little steam engines. I'm going to do a series with Fusion. And we're going to model, model a steam engine in Fusion 360. Uh, try to, you know, by doing a project in three, Fusion... You, uh, this is how you learn uh, to use Fusion for what you want to use it for. I'm going to go through and we're going to do a ste little steam engine, but we're going to learn uh, how to do all these little different things all the way up to a model and we'll even animate it in Fusion. Fusion may not be the best program for animating and, and things like that because it's really directed around modeling and then going to cam. Uh, the, but it's pretty it's not too bad it's pretty good so you could you can at least do some of that and, and get it animated and you can see how things work and move and and all that uh, i think autodesk inventor is probably a better program for the animation part fusion is uh is pretty good and we're going to go all through all the steps uh to get it all the way to that point yeah, it'll take us a little while to do uh, i don't i only really plan on doing trying to do one a week type of thing because it, it you know i got to kind of do it ahead of time and I got to kind of think about it so uh, so you to so you can learn from it uh, there'll be short videos uh, I'm gonna try to keep them under 10 minutes you know try to keep them kind of short and just kind of cover one or two things at a time so you can then practice at home and and work through and learn those steps you don't want to go too fast if, if I show you 20 different things in a video you'll know you'll, you'll be lucky if you remember two you know, so, so if you work through and try to learn a couple at a time, you, your, your absorption will be much better. So anyway, thank you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. And let's check this other stuff out. I received from a viewer uh, a while back, over a year ago. And this is a Criterion boring head, 3-inch. There's the model number, D1. 
DBL203. It was their 50th anniversary version, and the thing is brand new. A really nice boring head, but it's been hard for me to use because of the size here. These are three quarter inch bores. I made a couple boring bars for it, but you know, you can't use small ones or anything on it if you want a small one. Anyway, the Bartons are at Solid Rock Machine Shop. Link will be in the description. Started making some bushings for to fit in these. These are three quarters on the outside. This has a quarter inch ID, half inch, and this one's three eighths to go in there. So I have that one in there. They, these really go in there snug. They just they fit beautiful. But he made them so they have, uh, well, they'll actually have uh, th th four points of contact on there. So and it has flats. So for aligning a boring bar, you know, for the screws. These are they're all hardened and ground. Just be uh, beautiful things. This is uh, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Steve, Adam, Kathy, and Rachel. I'm not sure who worked on these and made them, but those are the guys over there. The family operation, just a uh, wonderful group. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Solid Rock Machine Shop and uh, the Bartons for sending me those. Now I got something here I just received in the mail just moments ago. Uh, UPS came. It's in a mail thing, but UPS came. This is a steam engine, another steam engine. This one's a little bigger, and I'm going to pull out the castings. This is sent to me by uh, Richard Hawkins, and he contacted me, and he had two of these, and he asked me if I would like to have one. I said, sure, I'm in the steam engine mode, so I might as well, right? But no, I, yeah, I find these interesting, and, and I, they're, so far they're pretty fun to build. Now, uh, Richard says here, you he sent me a note, and he says that uh, he knows the owner of the, of the company. I guess he's the, probably the designer, too. Are from Norbit H. Kelly Model Engine Works in St. Per Petersburg, Ohio. Now, like I said, so there's, there's a two, two drawings here, it covers all these parts. They're big. Flywheel. Base. Now that's uh, six uh, something inches. Okay, so that's uh, six and a half inches across. That base is six and a half, roughly six and five eighths. Then we have these us upright. Now this, this here, there we go. So that's going to go on top of there. And we have, that's the cylinder. Now that cylinder is about two and a half inches long and inch and three quarters in diameter. And the shaft for it. Now that's gonna go on there like that. Through, through, this is gonna go through there like that. Uh, okay, and then uh, like I said, the flywheel, and the flywheel's gonna be up here on the shaft. Like so, and then your cylinder down here. And then uh, we have the uh, cylinder heads, two of those right there. And we have the bearing caps for up here for the shaft up on the flywheel. And then this is the crank or crank web, crank arm. On here, your flywheel is up here. The crankshaft sticks out here, and this this web, this this arm is on on there on on the shaft or on the flywheel drive shaft on the drive shaft I guess you'd call that. Yeah, we do have to wobble back and forth. Right? That's a nice big flywheel. That's that's cool. And they also show a pulley on this other side that you can. That you can you know put a pulley or something to drive it drive something with on this side. So uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. I got to get the other two done first, but this is <laughs> this is this will be right there, and then this piece of plastic. I don't I'm not sure what it is. It could could be a piece of Teflon actually. Oh, another steam engine project. How cool is that?
Thank you again, Richard. Well, the mail came here this afternoon also, and look what I got something. Something from a man himself, Mr. Pete 222. How often do you guys get something from Mr. Pete 222? Anyway, Lyle is a wonderful person, and uh, my whole career watching YouTube and being able to watch Mr. Pete, uh, it was a, I felt it was, a, it was a great honor for me to be able to go and stay with him and, and meet him and spend a couple days with him. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, I would love to do that again, uh, but it, you never know. Uh, maybe that occasion will come up again. Uh, but, you know, uh, it was just fantastic, and uh, he's, he's such, a, such a nice gentleman, and uh, it was quite the honor to to meet him. If, if anybody ever gets a chance, if he ever does a meet and greet thing again, you should definitely uh, make it out to, to meet Lyle. He's, uh, he's fantastic. But anyway, he showed a couple things in one of his uh, What Is It, I think it was, videos. And, and uh, <laughs> he said he had a bunch of them. So I said, well, hey, you know, I've never even seen those before, and, uh, but I could use them. <laughs> so uh, anyway. This is what he sent me. He sent me a couple of these files that he showed. Uh, these are pretty slick. I, I, I swear I've never even seen these things before. And uh, of course, being out here on the West Coast, you know, you we don't see a lot of things sometimes. Anyway, here's a. This is what they're for, because uh, I I actually use them and I have quite a few of them. This is just this is just one box I have. Now, I have other boxes of these, adjustable ones from my uh, grandfather, who was a carpenter, and, and, his, and my great-grandfathers. They were carpenters, uh, and my great-grandfather, he came uh, from, from England, and way, uh, from actually Wales, over there, and uh, his brother, and they, they were carpenters and stonemasons. So, carpentry has been in the family for a long time, and... Uh, but now this set, though, these I got from my, my neighbor, my 100-year-old neighbor who moved back to Oregon. He's not my neighbor anymore, but he's my dear friend. And uh, I got to visit him on his 100th birthday up there in Oregon. But he gave me these before he moved away, so they are kind of special to me. A little set of Russell Jennings auger bits. Stanley, they have the name on them. Uh, they, they're made in the USA. And then they go from small here, quarter inch probably. No. Uh, shoot, I can barely read it. I bet that says, no, it says four sixteenths on it. So that's a quarter inch. So a quarter inch, and then uh, the next layer opens up, and the next layer opens up. It's kind of cool. Cool box up to probably one inch. Nope. Yeah, up to 16 sixteenths. That's what it says on there. And uh, like I said, they're made in the USA. A very nice set. But this is what those files are for, though. These files are have safe edges on them. And that means that they're smooth. On, the, on this end, they're safe edges, I should say. And this end, they're not. So this is what they're for. Take the safe edge one, and you reach right in here the, on the lower part the bo from the bottom of the cutting edge, and you, f you can file that cutting edge and sharpen it, because these are, these are not particularly hard or anything. They're actually kind of soft, and uh, you just, you can actually file that cutting edge right on up to the, what's important is getting it all the way sharp to the, your center. That's uh, pretty important. To, as that screws in, you want that to be able to cut right away. Uh, to get a good good cut and good clean cut board hole, but anyway, so that that's what that's for. And you you uh, sharpen the outer edge, which which slices the edge of the hole, so the edge of the hole doesn't chip. And you you can you can you can sharpen it here, just on this on the inside again on the inside, and and gently get you'll get burrs on here. You know you hit knots and hard things sometimes in the wood. But that's what that's for is to, to, to reach right in there 
and sharpen these kind of auger bits. Very cool. Thank you, Lyle. Sent me two of them, which is really nice. Uh, there we go. He sent me two of them, which is really nice of him, and they'll be uh, really kind of handy. Uh, you can just carry them uh, right in your tool bag if you're using them and uh, stuff. I, I've built a few log homes, uh, and uh, sometimes having a bracing bit uh, can save you a lot of time and effort uh, having to reach for an electric drill all the time and things like that. It's uh, you can carry that brace and bit with you if you're, especially if you're doing a lot of holes or hole cleanups, where you have to get just get the end of the hole and things. But anyway, these uh, these are really good and uh, thank you, Lyle. Thank you a lot for the uh, files.